Look at all you lovely people out here. How y'all doing? Good? How was lunch? Was it good? That was some bomb lunch. Uh, I got 10 minutes, so we're going to make this quick. A huge shout out and thank you to everybody that makes this event possible. This is my first Chain React. Super, super stoked to be here. So if you see anybody in a red shirt or that had made this happen, uh, definitely give them some props. Give them some love. Uh, they'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. We're developer community. Thank your sponsors while you're at it. Uh, if it wasn't for sponsors, we wouldn't have events like this. We wouldn't have developer community. We wouldn't be here having fun, learning, enjoying our time, networking, and being with people that we love. So if you get a chance, thank the sponsors. Uh, if you do the social media stuff, this is the official hashtag for the event, Chain React 2023. Uh, if you could also throw hashtag developer community on there, that's personally for me and for the developer community. I love to track the engagement, see where people are at, see what people are doing, see how they're vibing, see how they're having fun. So if you do do that, throw these on there. And if you're taking pictures, please add an alternative text to any images that you put on social media. Because it is Global Accessibility Awareness Day, and I am going to give an accessibility talk. So please do that. Today is the 12th Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Is anybody familiar with GAD, G-A-A-D? Cool, awesome. It's a great day. We're here to celebrate. It's only fitting that you're going to hear an accessibility talk from me on this great day. So I wanted to highlight that. Incorporating screen readers into React Native development for improved accessibility. This talk specifically is just going to focus on voiceover on an iPhone. Uh, but this works for TalkBack, too. You know, there's different things inside React Native. Uh, but this demo and this talk is strictly going to focus on voiceover. That's me. I'm a developer advocate. I work at Split Software. Split Software is a feature management and experimentation platform. So we do A-B testing, feature flags. That's me speaking at a different conference. Uh, so if you want to know more about Split and what we do and A-B testing and all that fun stuff, or you want to know more about accessibility or tattoos and spooky stuff, uh, hit me up after, and I'll be more than happy to kick it and hang out. So what is, what is web accessibility? What does that mean, right? Well, this is what the W3 says. Web accessibility means that websites, tools, and technologies are designed and developed so that people with disabilities can use them. That's great. The W3 used to say, so it could be a web for, for people with disabilities. Well, that's a BS statement. I'm sorry if you work at the W3. I'm glad they changed it. This makes a lot more sense, right? Why? Why does accessibility matter? Why do you think it matters? You know, most of you in here right now are using assistive technology. You probably don't even know it. We need to be creating and shipping amazing accessible user experiences for everybody all around the world. We're not making five or six different experiences. We're making one experience that works for everybody. We don't want to leave anybody out. This is an open web, and the open web is supposed to be an inclusive web. So we need to stop excluding people because we think something looks dope because the colors came from a branding or marketing team, and they just don't work. We really need to start thinking about the users and putting ourselves in the user's shoes. That's why web accessibility matters. That's why we need to be building with web accessibility at the forefront of anything that we are doing. It is never an afterthought. Security is always an afterthought. Performance is always an afterthought. Accessibility is always an afterthought. These are all things that are on the, uh, the umbrella of UX, user experience. It's time to stop that noise and start caring about it from the beginning. That's why. I'm going to talk about screen readers. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about Mac voiceover. So if, you, uh, if you're into the Mac ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem, iPad has a voiceover, Macs, the, you know, uh, MacBooks have voiceover, your iPhones have a voiceover, you can use that built-in screen reader to do your testing, right? You need to be testing these. You have to test screen readers. Talk back, voiceover. If you're coming from the web space, I'm, I'm a web person, developer advocate, been a front-end developer for 27 years. If you're on a Windows machine, NVDA, Mac is voiceover, and if you are a Linux nerd, which is great, Orca is the screen reader for Linux distros. But you have to test these. This is one of the things that's overlooked all the time. It's one of those low-hanging fruits like color contrast. It's one of those low-hanging fruits like adding alternative text with your images, right? You have to think about these things from the beginning. And if you're testing a screen reader, don't look at the screen and listen to it. That's cheating. That's not fair. Nobody's doing that, right? Make sure you test them properly. So this is an example. This is uh, the Chain React app. It's going to run through. The audio should work. 
Oh, it's not working. To react native development for improved accessibility. May 18th, 1.50 p.m. PT. Chris DeMars. Split. Lightning talk details. Voice over it. All right, I'm going to stop it there. Did you see it skipped right over the Twitter button? That's an accessibility issue. Now, if somebody can't see that or hear that, they have no idea how to get to my Twitter or any type of social media, anything that's there, right? It's missing something. So you have to bake in some React Native into that, right? Accessibility role. It's going to give it a role of button so that can be announced to your user. Accessibility label. It's going to take the icon that pulls in from React Native. I think you JavaScript nerds call it a prop. And then uh, accessibility hints, so that can give different hints on what it's navigating to Twitter, right? That's the experience we want. We don't want to leave anybody out. So this is the real deal. This is how it should be. Back, button, image, back. Incorporating screen readers into React Native development for improved accessibility. May 18th, 1.50 p.m. PT. Chris DeMars, split, Twitter, button. Selected, home to your prof in progress. Pin tweet. VoiceOver announced to me that it was a button and it was Twitter. I knew how to interact with it. If you are familiar with the gestures on an, on an iPhone or an Android device, if you're familiar with the gestures, the gestures can be uh, a little tricky. Uh, putting this demo together, it's you know swiping up, swiping down, and this, that, and the other thing. So as a person is able to do that, it's confusing. Put yourself in the user's shoes as somebody's just getting into using VoiceOver on their device, right? You want to make, you don't want to make them think whatsoever. If you've read Stephen Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think, don't, do not make them think. It should be intuitive, it should be painlessly, quote unquote easy, to use that experience with VoiceOver. Shows you right here, it didn't skip over that, it focused to that button, I was able to double tap that button and it took me directly to Twitter. That's the real deal. And this is a production app. Like, this is not, you're not going to not have this experience, right? This is out there in production. This is how it should be. The demo prior, that one doesn't, you know, that one's not out there. This is actually what's out there right now. Uh, that's me. That's my time. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter. It's Salton Burnham. If you're a Supernatural fan, you'll understand that reference. I have a bunch of resources. It's at bit.ly, bit.ly, slash react, dash, native, dash, vo. Thank you so much.